Welcome to MarcusG.TV. I'm Chef Marcus Giuliano. I'm a chef on a mission. Today's mission is nutrition, my favorite mission here. Um, we're going to talk about Dr. Oz's five superfoods. Now, a lot of doctors, a lot of nutritionists, a lot of whatever, TV shows, food channel, whatever they are, websites, blogs, <clears throat> a lot of them have a list of their top superfoods. And it's funny to see what people think of as a superfood. A superfood is referred to as a food that packs far much more nutrition than other foods in its like category, class, something like that, okay? So, Dr. Oz, here's his five superfoods. Pumpkin seeds, love them. Eggs, not so much, I don't eat eggs. Pomegranates, that's a great superfood. Pomegranates are loaded with antioxidants. Oatmeal, he does it for the soluble fiber content that reduces your bad cholesterol. Um, and black currants, black currants I think are a great superfood. So typically when people think of superfoods, they think of foods that have higher antioxidant levels than other foods. So, Dr. Oz has a nice list there, those five foods. The only thing I don't like on his list are eggs. I'm um, gonna list it for the iron. The iron that comes from beef, dairy, and eggs, your body can't regulate that iron. You can, the idea is to have get enough iron in all of your foods and eat a variety of foods and foods that have a good iron content, vegetables that have good iron content. When you eat vegetables that have a good iron content, your body can regulate that iron. If you build up too much iron, you can get a toxicity, you can have side effects. You don't want too much iron. When you eat meat, your body can't regulate that iron. It can only regulate vegetarian sources of iron. So that's really important. If you're eating for iron, you must know that. Heme versus non-heme iron. So the iron from animal products is not regulated. It can keep building up. Vegetarian sources, your body knows, and your body doesn't absorb it, and it kicks it out because your body says, okay, I have enough iron. So. Um, I don't recommend cooking with iron cookware, like cast iron cookware, because that iron cannot be regulated either. Your body's just going to keep a building, building up iron. Um, so now here's some of my superfoods that I like. Now keep in mind, some people confuse a superfood and a super nutrient or a super supplement. So something like cinnamon or holy basil, aka Tulsi, those are more like nutrient supplement um, or spices. That's not something you'd sit there and, and eat, okay? You could eat goji berries. Um, you can eat quinoa, you can eat certain things, you can make a meal out of them, but you can't make a meal out of, you know, holy basil, out of ginseng. So let's let's separate that first, okay? So here's some of my top superfoods. Goji berries are definitely up there. Um, for a long time, I loved cacao, raw chocolate. Um, has a lot of properties to it. I personally don't do chocolate in my own diet anymore, uh, but I can see people where they put that into the superfood um, category. I can see other people saying that, that that's a legitimate source. It's high in magnesium, um, so um, it has a lot of good things in it. Um, it also has theobromine, which is a stimulant, so that's why some people don't like it. Um, hemp, hemp seeds. Um, not something you make a meal out of, but something you can add to a salad, okay? Very high in protein, good omegas, really, really awesome. Um, quinoa, which I mentioned, chia. Chia seeds, extremely high in protein. Um, you can you know put that into a salad as well mix that into your rice um, make a chia pudding for dessert which is awesome um, wild blueberries now wild versus cultivated blueberries anything that's wild is gonna have more antioxidants because it needs its own immune system to be stronger out in the wild thus the immune system equates to these to the antioxidant level of the plant okay also how you can tell antioxidants of high levels of antioxidants in food is by the pigment, the color. The darker the food, typically the higher antioxidant that it is. Okay, so chocolate's dark, okay. Um, uh, stuff like chlorella, spirulina, um, currants, um, goji berries, these are all dark colors. That equates to antioxidants. So that's how you can tell, is this a superfood or is this not a superfood? Um, prunes are definitely a high on the antioxidant list. Got a lot of good qualities to them. Sea veggies um, are also really well. Mushrooms like mayatake mushrooms, which are extremely edible and very wild here in the, in the end of the summer, early fall on the East Coast and in through Ohio and stuff. Um, so mayatake mushrooms, those are awesome incredible medicinal and culinary mushrooms. They're just not a medicinal, they're also a culinary mushroom. You can make a meal out of them and they're extremely delicious. Um, mangosteen, that fruit mangosteen, it's an awesome fruit, very high in antioxidants. And we've made several drinks out of mangosteen. Um, and things that are seasonings or supplements that I really like that I sometimes will use, of course, ginseng, ashwagandha, which is an Indian type of ginseng, uh, stinging nettles, I make tea out of stinging nettles. 
Um, you really just couldn't eat it like a stinging nettle salad because they're not uncomfortable. But you can make tea out of it. Stinging nettles are extremely nutrient dense. Um, shilajit, which is a powder like a, a, a humus um, volcanic um, powder that comes from India. Oh my gosh, it's, it's incredible, incredible stuff. Outrageous stuff. Super expensive, um, but really, really awesome stuff. You just need a touch in a smoothie or in some kind of elixir that you're making. Just a small, small touch. Turmeric, which is an incredible anti-inflammatory, is also good. That's one of the best anti-inflammatories, one of the best cancer fighters out there that some studies are pointing to. Um, so there's a list, an endless list of high antioxidant uh, so-called superfoods that are out there. And you know, the neat thing is, when you eat a superfood, the idea is not to say, well, I'm going to eat a bad diet and then ha eat a superfood because turmeric is anti-inflammatory and I can eat all the fried crap and the meat or whatever I'm eating or donuts and then all of a sudden I'm going to have turmeric because I know turmeric is good for me. You have Your whole diet has to be whole. Your whole diet has to contain good food. It matters what you do most of the time, not some of the time. And sometimes people use these superfoods as a some of the time um, addition to their diet. They might eat oatmeal in the morning and then, you know, and follow it with bacon and eggs or have a terrible lunch and have high other high cholesterol foods when you're eating oatmeal to get rid of cholesterol. You know, ideally you want to eat your whole diet as much as you possibly can of all these pure, natural, whole foods. And it's simple to do. It's very, very simple to do and it's cost effective. Sometimes they do cost more money, but when you eat closer to nature, when you cook your own food, it, it, there is a savings to that. There's a, definitely a financial savings. Um, so, what are your favorite superfoods? Uh, you heard some of my favorite superfoods. You heard some of Dr. Oz's. Dr. Oz's again, pumpkin seeds, pomegranates, oatmeal, black currants, and he had eggs. And eggs, I, I don't like the eggs, and I told you why I don't like the eggs. So, um, I'm Chef Marcus Giuliano. Thank you for watching this video. If you like my videos, please hit like, um, subscribe to my channel, and definitely pass it on.